The Devil Comet, a ten mile wide chunk of rock and ice hurtling toward the sun more formerly known as Comet 12P Pons Brooks, has been a popular astrophotography target for the past few weeks, and in this video, I'm going to take you through step by step how I photographed and processed this rare cosmic event. Hey guys, welcome back to JW Deep Sky. Comet 12P Pons Brooks was nicknamed the Devil Comet because it had a U-shaped tail earlier this year, which looked kind of like devil horns. It has since grown a much longer tail with a green hue in the core. The comet is coming in perpendicularly to the orbital plane of our solar system and is currently 150,000 miles from Earth. It'll reach perihelion, the closest point to the sun, on April 21st this year. You can see this and other comet data on theskylive.com, which I've linked in the description. And side note, it may even be visible during the total solar eclipse if you're in the band of totality, along with all of the other planets. This is truly going to be a once in a generation cosmic event. So this was my first opportunity to get a good picture of a comet, so I was new to this process and didn't know what to expect going into it. But I did my research and ended up with a pretty good result. It started on a clear night in between endless rain and clouds in my area, South Delaware. I was looking at the Stellarium app with the intention of photographing the comet that night. And I saw that it was right in between and below M31 and M33, the Andromeda and Triangulum galaxies. So this meant that it was low on the western horizon and only visible for a short time before it would go below my tree line in my backyard. So I got out my refractor and polar aligned it like I normally would for deep sky astrophotography, and I told my ASI Air to point my scope right at the comet. And after a short 30 second test exposure, I was stunned when I saw the comet in the view. In addition to the limited time I had to capture the target, it was still somewhat brighter in that part of the sky because the sun had just set, so conditions were working against me. I let my ASI Air run as many 30 second exposures as I could get, and the images were improving slightly over the duration due to it getting darker. I took these images with my current main astrophotography photography rig, which you can see on the gear page of my website, which I've linked in the description. In total, I ended up with 51 usable frames for my final image. Here's a gif I made of the comet moving among the stars that night over a period of about a half hour. The gif was made on easygif.com, and all you have to do is just upload a series of pictures, and the website will create a gif animation for you. So I just auto-stretched my individual frames and saved them as JPEGs, and then imported them into easygif.com. So on to processing the image. I use PixInsight almost exclusively in my processing workflow. It is an expensive software, especially with the add-ons, but in my opinion, using this software is one of the most important things you can do to improve your images as an astrophotographer. It's definitely possible to achieve fantastic images with Photoshop or Cyril, but when I made the switch to PixInsight, I saw an immediate drastic improvement in my images. There is also a free trial of PixInsight available, so you can try it if it's too expensive. So when I get ready to process an image in PixInsight, the first process I do is called Blink. Blink allows you to preview your individual frames quickly and you can mark which ones are keepers and which ones you want to throw away. Once I'm done filtering out the bad images, uh, I will then go to Script, Batch Processing, weighted batch pre-processing. In here, you can add your light frames and your calibration frames. Calibration frames are pretty important here. Uh, you want to capture at least dark frames to help get rid of the hot pixels that appear in your image, because if you don't, due to the comet and the stars needing to be aligned separately, uh, hot pixels will end up doing some damage to your final picture. For dark frames, if you have a cooled astro camera, you can just set your camera's temperature to the same temperature as your light frame and take the frames at the same exposure length as your light frames. And I like to just keep my rig in a dark room to take these. So I just took 30 dark frames at 30 seconds a piece to match my light frames exposure time, and it mostly fixed my hot pixel issue, though it's still not perfect as you'll see in the final image. So run weighted batch pre-processing, which will take anywhere from around 15 minutes to a half hour, depending on how many exposures you have. Once the stack is completed, open up the master stack file in PixInsight and use the screen transfer function auto stretch to see the result. You should see the comet and the stars as you might expect. Uh, the only thing is that the core of the comet might look a little bit weird. That's because the stars were aligned, but the comet was moving against the background. So what we need to do next is extract the stars. You can use Star Exterminator or StarNet++, whichever you have. Uh, in StarNet++ in PixInsight, check Generate Star Image and Unscreen Stars. Once you have the star image extracted, save the star image in a sensible place. And also, I saved mine as a .tiff file. Uh, next, we're going to use a process called Comet Alignment in PixInsight. In this process, you'll need to add all of your registered images that you use during stacking. Uh, don't just take them from your SD card or out of your ASI Air. They need to be the registered images specifically. Uh, choose a sensible output directory 
I named mine Comet Aligned for simplicity. Once you've added the images to comment alignment, double click on the first comment image file and just click the center of the core of the comet. Do this again for the last comet image. Here we're just letting the program know how the comet has moved from the first image to the last image. Next, still in the comment alignment process, under the subtract tab, add the stars image that we saved before in the operand image field, then select stars aligned in the operand type field. Now you can click the circle icon to apply this process and the comet aligned images will appear in your specified output directory. The next process we need to use is called image integration. Here we will basically stack our comet aligned images. So go ahead and add the comet aligned files. You can just click the circle and run this process and you may end up with a great result. My issue was that when I did this, I ended up with bad hot pixel trails. Uh, I thought my calibration went great and I had gotten rid of all the hot pixels in my image, but apparently there were some stragglers. I was able to mitigate some of this a bit by selecting Sigma Clipping in the Pixel Rejection 1 tab. Default settings here seem to mostly do the trick. What I would do from here, if you're happy with your result, is just go on and process the image like a normal astro pick. I'm lucky enough to have all the easy mode features of PixInsight. They are expensive, but they make processing a breeze and you end up with great images. For the comet, I would simply run Blur Exterminator and Noise Exterminator, add some saturation, and then combine the stars and starless images, then add a slight S-curve to the histogram to improve contrast. So I'm happy with my image of the comet, although it certainly could have turned out better. I didn't have much time to capture the target because it was so low on the western horizon, but if you can, try to make it out to a dark sky location and get as much time on target as possible. The next time we see this comet might be during the total solar eclipse. This has been JW Deep Sky, and as always, clear skies.